very important to theology because if you don't, if the universe is eternal, it always was, there obviously was no creation and no creator. As simple as that. So it's very important to a theologian to say, no, we can't have an eternal universe. The universe has to be finite. It had to have a beginning. And uh, the point is, how is it possible to have an eternal universe? And Craig uses an argument, uh, a mathematical argument. And he says, it, it, here, here's the time axis, and, and uh, you see the, the point labeled now. And uh, if the universe were eternal, it would take an infinite time to go from uh, the beginning of the universe, an infinite time ago, it would never reach the present. And so therefore, it's mathematically impossible to have an eternal universe. <laughs> However, it turns out that this is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the eternal universe had no beginning, not a beginning an infinite time ago. <laughs> here's now, and you see, if you go back, no matter how far you go back, here's like uh, minus 10 to the 100 years ago, so finite time, you see, there's no beginning, there's no beginning, not an infinite be uh, beginning an infinite time ago. So, so that argument fails, and the universe could very well be eternal. That proved, doesn't prove the universe is eternal, but at least it shows that it doesn't have to have had a finite beginning. Now, the other argument that is used, uh, and I'll say a lot about this, is what the subject of my upcoming book is about, the question of whether the universe is, is fine-tuned for humanity. This is a very common claim. You'll, you'll be reading, you'll, you'll read a, a, a theolo uh, theological literature. Francis Collins uses it in his best-selling book, The Language of God. Francis Collins, if you, if you recall, was the geneticist. He was the uh, head administrator of the Human Genome Project, who now is the the uh, director of the National Institutes of Health, and he wrote this book called The Language of God, that came out a few years ago, that was a bestseller, and essentially he argues that God exists uh, because he thinks he exists. I mean, that's what such a crazy argument in that book. <laughs> he reads, he, he, his own, the only theologian he ever read was C.S. Lewis, uh, uh, an author of children's literature. <laughs> But he's a nice fellow. <laughs> so let's uh, let's examine the issue of whether the universe looks like it's it's uh, suited for life, especially designed for you. First of all, the galactic space around the Earth is not exactly teeming with complex life. The uh, Earth, of course, is the only known planet with life, although we're you know, someday we might be able to find life elsewhere. Uh, the fact is that there's huge distances, as you all know, between between stars, between galaxies. So there's an awful lot of waste in space out there that not doesn't have uh, humans or any other kind of life in it. Uh, the distances are immense. For example, the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, is 4.22 light years away. The nearest galaxy is uh, uh, over 2 million light years away, that's Andromeda. This is what's the picture in the background there, the Andromeda galaxy, which incidentally is moving toward us. You know, most galaxies are moving away from us, this one's moving toward us, and may collide with us at some point. However, don't worry about it. <laughs> the meteor was going to, the asteroid's going to wipe out the Earth long, uh, the life on Earth long time before that. Happens. The galaxies within our horizon, what I mean is the horizon, is the farthest out you could see in space, where, where it would take an object to uh, have to go past the speed of light, so the light could reach us, it's 40 billion light years away. And you think that's a pretty vast universe, 40 billion light years? Well, if you believe the current cosmologies, the universe beyond the horizon is far greater than our visible universe. Maybe 10 to the 10 to the 100 times bigger than the visible universe. If you think of a grain of sand on the Sahara Desert, and think of the Sahara Desert being on every planet in the universe, that's how much is out there. Uh, all from the original Big Bang, the original inflationary period of the Big Bang. That's how vast the universe is. 
Okay, and that's just our universe, not all the bubbles that are out there, just our bubble, our original bubble is ten to the ten to the hundred times bigger than the visible universe, and there's all those bubbles out there that are just as big. 